We're back one last time on Seven Rivers Racing here in KQE GTV. I never have a chance to thank Jesse, our producer. He does a nice job putting together Excellent the show job. during the week. Rick Wilson for having us do the show this year. Hopefully we can beg them and come back and do it again next year. I oh, think we've had, we've had fun so far. This has been a lot of fun. Of course, um, a lot of coverage of the tracks. Mississippi Thunder, if you need more information, MississippiThunder.com. Dells Raceway Park, uh, those guys have done a nice job giving me information all the way through the year and coming on the program. Uh, Matt Penier uh, and folks, DellsRacewayPark.com. And uh, Chuck Deary and Dave Nelke out at the Lacrosse Speedway. At LacrosseSpeedway.com, they've done a nice job of putting some things together. Matter of fact, I do want to remind folks, uh, they are looking for Oktoberfest pictures from the past. I think there's five or six different categories and uh, go to OktoberfestRaceWeekend.com and you can submit photos. They want the best uh, post-race party, the best memorial uh, um, uh, event that you've been to, maybe the best photo finish, and they're gonna take the winning pictures out of those categories and you're gonna win some prizes. And you and I love nostalgia. Oh, we, yeah. we, we gotta get Dale uh, uh, Danielski, Danielski mm -hmm. back on the program again. We put together that Oktoberfest and the, the history of racing in Western Wisconsin a couple of months ago. And I need to get him back on here before, I think we will have him on before the Oktoberfest race weekend uh, to do a, an Oktoberfest race special. And I can't wait to see some of the pictures people submit. It, it, I really love the history, like you mentioned. And when Dale comes in, and he can't get all these pictures himself. So the people that are out there that have taken pictures, like you said, not just of racing, but of the parties that go on on the infield and, and in the camping area, uh, it would be great to see all of them. Our guests today, Raymond Hardy and Jordan Meyer, father and son, they are racing Thunderstocks this year. Um, Raymond is running fifth in points, and Jordan running sixth in points, and he's also in the lead for Rookie of the Year. A couple of weeks ago, you guys were doing battles side by side, and I think it was the first time this year, if memory serves me correctly, that the both of you, everybody knows in the Thunderstock class, if you start in the back or the middle, your chances of winning are very slim. It's very hard to do because of the motor and the, and the drivers that are sitting in front of you. But you guys found yourself side by side going for a race win a couple of weeks here. First off, Jordan, what goes through your mind when you look across and there's dad? Uh, I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I just, I guess keep up with them, try to pass them. And, and beat him? Yeah. So, so you got some smacking to do afterwards? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> what goes through your mind, Raymond? Also, you see the son. Does does the father, I'd like my son to win instinct come out, or, or, or is this one of those, I'm not getting beat by my kid? Well, at the beginning of the year, he looked at me, Adam and Andy, and said, I don't want you guys to let me win. I want to earn it. Nice. It takes a real man to do that. I mean, right. I'm not even going to call him a boy. I mean, it takes a real man to do something like that. And I think he's, I think he's, he's shown it this year. I mean, how do you, uh, and look at Dustin Bankstag as well. He was rookie there last year, and he's in, he's, he's in the top five in points, or top six, seven in points. And then Jordan's following that up. I mean, here's a guy going for rookie there that's also in the top five for points. He's really surprised me this year. I mean, um, I when he gets out in front, I mean, I don't think he can be caught. I mean, I think he, Andy, might be able to run him down and catch him and pass him, but other than that, he's going to check out. <laughs> Do you find yourself spending a lot of time off the track thinking about the laps, especially before the season uh, happened, how you were going to get around the racetrack, and then when you're on the racetrack, you're usually using that visualization? Um, Kind of, sort of. Normally, like, the night or two before, like, as I'm going to bed, I'll kind of think about it and, like, what I want to do, and then kind of just go... Although nothing really happens because nothing's going to go your way, but right. you kind of just have to ride it and yeah. always watch in front of you because that's, otherwise it's going to be bad. What kind, of, what kind of goals did you set yourself as the race season started back in April? Obviously, everyone, you know, in the back of their mind thinks, I'd sure like to get Rookie of the Year, but it's very tough to do, especially when you get a class of 18 Thunderstocks out there. What were some of the goals you had? Um, my first it was just finish top ten in points. That'd been cool for me, but right. and then rookie of the year, of course, and then just feature win. That was probably the biggest one. <laughs> I wanted to get a feature win. Now you've got, I think, four races left, and then you have Oktoberfest. Um, you have a slim point lead for rookie of the year. I mean, one bad night and things could change. Obviously, oh, we've yeah. seen that go with the point standings in the other classes as well. And you're trying to finish top five points, and, and, and you want that for yourself, and of course you want that for your sponsors as well. 
Do you think nerves are going to start settling in here? Butterflies maybe coming back again as we're getting down towards the end, and you do have a lot on the line? Yeah, there was. Uh, just last Saturday before the feature, because I won the feature the previous week, so I had to start in the back, and I was more nervous than I was the first night out. I was shaking so bad, and then I was just like, all right, you just have to run, and whatever happens, happens. And I came out getting third, so it was a good night for me. It's a good move. And again, that's hard to do when you come out of the back. You know, I, I talk to Andy more about that in the pits all the time, and Brad Worth, I mean, how easy is it to come out of that back row? And, and if you get, say, Andy, Brad, Jason Bolster, uh, Rusty Winchell, and Jay Kruger, if they're all running in the top five, forget it. I mean, <laughs> those guys are battling yeah. to win that race, <laughs> and it's hard to get around those guys. And Raymond, you've been in that position several times this year. There's nothing you really can do except for follow and hope one of them makes a mistake to pass them. Now, what do you guys have to, for sponsors this year? Do you, have, do you have the same sponsors, or is it a little bit different? Well, so we'll start with the, the young man. Yeah, we have the same sponsors, but we won't get him on the car until we actually get his car out, which will be out this week, it should be. And for sponsors, I have Denton's Transmission of Sparta, uh, Denton's Hobby Shop from Sparta, Culver's from Sparta, Innovations Rehabilitation from Sparta, SJ Custom Design, which did all my graphics and stickers for the car, uh, Randy Beers Auto Care, he helped me out a lot and helped me with the trailer race car just last week, so that was That's a right. help. That's right, he took, and Jordan took second in the trailer race of fun last weekend. <laughs> yeah, and then, then we have Sparta Grill from Sparta, obviously. It's one of my friend's dad's businesses. So. It's right downtown Sparta. Of course, uh, Denton's Hobbies moved from one end of downtown to the other end of downtown. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the mood for hobbies or uh, models and stuff like that, you can check that out. Uh, guys, we want to appreciate uh, and thank you for both coming on the program. I know getting your schedules together was kind of hard to do, but uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, Raymond Hardy and uh, Jordan Myers, and uh, you haven't seen the last of these guys here uh, for the rest of the year. When you look at the point standings, I always at the track include Rookie of the Year. And I know some tracks don't do that because they're not in the top five right. of their top five divisions. I think Rookie of the Year is, is, is one of the most important classes out there, and especially when you win that and it, it comes banquet time. Oh, it, Rookie of the Year is very important in any division because it can launch you perhaps into the next division. Uh, it'll help with sponsorship, and it gives you a sense of pride that you can carry the rest of your racing career. Well, we're going to set you up on Saturday on AM 580 WKTY. My race report comes your way from 4 to 5. We'll get you set for what's going on that night. And also at Adele's Raceway Park. And remember, Friday night, Mississippi Thunder Speedway in Fountain City. If you are from La Crosse County, show proof of ID and you get in for free. No questions asked. And that's going to be a great time because they always put on a great show. So uh, you can always check us out at youtube.com slash Seven Rivers Racing and uh, there's an email if folks have questions. Yes, if you ever have a question or want to ask anybody anything out at the racetrack, go to www.fansarena.com slash Seven Rivers Racing Show dot HTML and ask any question. It's just a simple little form. You fill it out, you click go, and uh, we'll be glad to answer anything. All righty, for Raymond Hardy and Jordan Myers, going for Rookie of the Year, and Al Osium Dan Dyker, thanks for joining us in the program. A couple of weeks left, start making plans for Oktoberfest, the Fall Fest on at Rockford, and your favorite racetrack. We'll be back next week with more racing here in Western Wisconsin on the Seven Rivers Racing Show here in KQEG-TV.